Nice. Look at all the videos we made. They Excellent. go pretty. You did a good job. You ready to go make these guys a sheath? Yeah, uh, what one were we going to make? I think uh, SE3. The yeah, SE3? Yeah. Yeah, people have been subscribing lately. Why not? Let's do it. Follow me. Welcome back to 5 Minute Knives. And this week we thought we would do something a little bit special. There was a lot of requests to make a, another sheath video. So we are. Real quick shout out to uh, Red Bear of the SE Knives group on Facebook of North America. Shout out to you guys. And... Um, yeah, uh, Red Bear was saying that, you know, maybe the next sheath uh, giveaway video, maybe make an SE3. So here we are. We're making an SE3. Here's me picking out some colors. I went with foliage green and a blood red with... Uh, I got these red washers. Goofy intro. This week. Uh, really excited about Halloween. That's going to be great. Can't wait. Okay. Everything coming out of the oven. Very basic stuff. As you guys know, Kydex is very simple. For the most part. I mean, you gotta know what you're doing a little bit, but... You know, whatever. So we're getting up to about 360 degrees, and then she's gonna go in the oven. All my she's are ambi, but uh, this one will be facing right... The presentation side will be uh, on the right. There's some extra Kydex I had laying around going through that. And here I'm making a drop down attachment. Something new we just started doing. I take two pieces, I, in I invert those from the uh, configuration of the uh, Kydex themselves. Here's me yapping about it. Look at this. I'm getting out of shape. Can you believe it? Always an athlete. I'm 41. Let myself go. That's the real horror story this year, this Halloween. So I lost all my Merskels. Okay, so this is the little, uh, you know, jig I made for the drop-down attachments. It's a little, like, offset uh, tile I got at Lowe's for free. And I just kind of uh, angled that on one side, inset some holes, and I had this piece of acrylic laying around. You know, that and a few clamps. Making the offset here. And with the stuff that's in the oven for the drop-down rig, I don't, I'm not too anal about exact temperatures, just as long as it's... Uh, you know, pretty warm. I can stick them together. They're going to marry in the jig. You you uh, stick them shiny side to shiny side, if that helps. And that'll help them really marry uh, the heat. It really sticks them together. And then also even like the scroll saw will help those two pieces marry. And then we're also going to rivet them. It can be a little tricky, though. Because as you're drilling the holes for the rivets, you could separate them, and that's kind of annoying. You can use clamps, but, you know, I'm trying to have a speedy operation here. Uh, I, I leave these in the, in the press for about 10, 15 minutes. 15. Uh, closer to 15. I like them to start setting a little bit. That's because I work with the sheath for a while uh, before I separate it. Then I really only separate the two pieces towards the end to clean them out and to uh, countersink the insides of the drainage holes. Also, you want to get a look in there, make sure nothing too weird's going on. That's why I'm not really making uh, taco cheese these days. They're a little bit more wonky to set up and you get some kind of weird results. There's a certain kind of press that I want to uh, make just for that. Scroll saw, cut out her shape. I actually started using this uh, little welder's mask or not welder's mask, whatever it is, just this like face shield. 
and um, when I was uh, grinding, and it's it's really nice. Yeah, it's actually really nice. So uh, here's my shapes. I try to um, basically account for each time the rivets and uh, the eyelets are offset. There is a line to go with each of those. Over here on the uh, buffing wheel, we're making the thumb ramp now with the Dremel tool. And then we get over to the buffing wheel. Rough buff. And that thumb ramp really needs to be ground down a bit. It's, it should be subtle, fairly subtle. Some of the times with the, the thumb ramps, guys, you go to push on the thumb ramp to re, uh, draw your knife, and your thumb actually pushes the two pieces together more so. Actually makes drawing difficult. So you want to go real shallow with those thumb ramps. Here I am uh, countersinking those uh, drainage holes. Now I use two of them. Cleaning out the little jimping in the thumb ramp I made. There you see all the crap on the inside. Countersink, countersink, clean. And then some hand sanding. This is an important part, actually, hand sanding. Believe it or not, for me anyway, it, it really does kind of finish out the, the sheath. So now we're going to make the drop down attachment. And this is a, you know, this is a little bit of a process, guys. This is why these things are like 40, 50, 60 bucks, you know. You're going to take up a couple hours making these things. Uh, this didn't take that long, obviously, but, and you get your, you know, you get faster as you go. But I never want to fly through an order. That's the thing. I always want to take my time. I always want the customer to be happy. Thank you, by the way, to everybody that's been um, leaving us positive reviews on the website and on eBay and elsewhere. Very nice. All positive, all good stuff. Not bragging. Just saying. Um, we had a lady recently say that uh, she never received a, a holster she ordered from us. And uh, this and that. Well, it went out. And then she told us, well, she input the wrong address. She was very upset and she wanted her money back because she input the wrong address. Okay. What did I tell Lily? Refund her. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to deal with people like that. I don't even want those people as my customers. Too annoying. So if she got a free sheath or a free holster, then uh, good on her. You got me. You got me. You wasted an hour of my life. Good job. But if my holsters and she's are good enough to steal, then I'm doing something right. So. And I can I still consider myself new on this journey, learning learning to make these she's and holsters. Like this drop-down attachment, this is something I just standardized uh, like last month. Worked out pretty good. Really does add a nice pop of color. Between that and the finishing washers, I really don't like making black anything anymore. I, I, I do appreciate the various colors. I don't know. Maybe because my, my whole life I was wearing all black gear. I, all my gear, always black. Just got kind of old, you know. Here's uh, putting the eyelets. These, uh, remember guys, these black eyelets will wear down. The paint will wear off them. And they're brass underneath. Uh, if that happens to you, you can get a brass blacker. Uh, it's like five bucks. You rub it on there, and it's kind of tricky, actually. Like, you got to let the oxygen do some work. Here's me, uh, you know, testing uh, fitment. Fitment. Uh, hardware and attachments going on. Just final cleanup. I use a Delica 4 for that. And I also use that Delica 4 to kind of, like, split the... Uh, sheath when I need to open it because sometimes it's uh from the press and all that other stuff it's like really hard to split those open so the Delica does a great job okay hardware going in I prefer to use a screwdriver than, than a drill I don't want to strip anything plus the paint can come off those screws really easy too and here you be there's a good fitment a little WD on there, give her some shine, testing her out, looking sharp. 
looking real sharp on the hip. And now, got my new little laser engraver, Johnny Five, is alive. And we go ahead and put the DSC Dragon on there. Uh, I think this is going to be standard, unless you request otherwise. You really, 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 really hate it. Then I won't do it, but a little bit of branding never killed anyone. And it's not like I'm billboarding. I'm very proud of what I do. I should put one on the uh, on the back there. But look at that with the dark red and the foliage green. It is gorgeous for the SE3. The SE3 certainly deserves a good sheath. Does it deserve a sheath that pretty? I don't know. Maybe. If you had the choice between the SE3 or the sheath, which would you pick? <laughs> I'm kidding. Love that knife. SE3, always been a staple. It actually rides on my Hill People chest rig. And that's for you guys. Shout out to the SE Knives group, and thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you next time on 5-Minute Knives.